When players talked about it hypothetically, is there a gay football player? What would you do if, if we had a gay teammate? Mm. And some of the things that have been said have, were low moments for me because suddenly players say, you know, if we have a gay teammate, I wouldn't shower with him. You know, I wouldn't get changed in the dressing room. And there were some other things that, that have been said that I thought, you know, I wouldn't want to be openly gay in this dressing room. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you. Right? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, good, thank you. Nice to finally meet you. Likewise, yeah. I'm Thomas Hetzelsberger, I'm 40 years old. Um, I used to be a professional football player in the Premier League, played for Aston Villa, West Ham and, and Everton. Also played in Germany, Italy and the German national team. Came out as gay after my career and ever since life has been brilliant. I've enjoyed it and here I am. Uh, I'm Jake Daniels, I'm 18 and I'm the UK's first male British Football to come out as gay. Um, I currently play for Blackpool and that's where I've been my whole career. I, I remember, you know, being 18 and like, okay, this is totally different different time but I mean really fantastic what you've done you thank know you. when you Appreciate when you came out ever since so pretty amazing so really really happy to meet you thank you nice to meet you too when did you come out so I came out uh, January 2014 that was just after I retired from football my last club was Everton um, and for the last two or three years of my career uh, I, I did think about doing it while I'm still playing because I knew I could answer a lot of questions surrounding being gay, openly gay in, in professional football. But um, there's several people I talked to, they, they kind of warned me, they said don't do it, don't do it. Uh, but after my career, like I said, January 2014, I was you know, big enough, brave enough to, to finally do it. It was a big moment for me, but probably even bigger was the time before talking to family and friends mm. and, and realising they were all, you know, they all were accepting and, and, and liked me as much as they did before, so it was good. You advised that you, you didn't come out during your playing career, just why was that? Well, I'd say the people I, I talked to, they tried to protect me because they didn't know much. They didn't know what it felt mm. like, so they just thought it would be too much for me. The pressure from you know fans in the dressing room, uh, the media and everything, that was always the, the perception. Uh, so not because they felt uncomfortable, they just wanted to protect me. That was my my thought at the time but there's so much going into it I mean you know yourself coming out it's not like okay I wake up one morning and I go public it's preparing it you know when I'm going to talk to my teammates when I speak to the manager to the club family and everything there was so much and at the same time of course I had to perform every day and it became too much and people talked me out of it eventually you know I talked to a couple of journalists that I was doing the interview with and then I was asked to, to, to speak to a lawyer and the lawyer said to me, don't do it, just don't do it. And he seemed like so experienced. He's mm. advised, you know, prominent people before and he said, look, the pressure is too much, don't do it. And I came out after the meeting saying, okay, I trust him. He, he probably knows more than I do. Uh, so I didn't do it, unfortunately. So I came out publicly May 2022. Um, came out to my family in 2021, the December. So, you know, that five, six month period was preparing myself, getting everything ready, make sure I did it in the right way. Um, and I think around May as well was when I told all my close friends and my club as well. So I think I just kept it personal until I was fully ready and prepared to come out publicly. I have a lot of questions to that regard, because obviously, what did your mum say, your sister? Did they kind of advise you to go public? So my mum and my sister, they said that they knew straight away that I, w I was already gay. You know, my mum's instinct, instinct yeah. she knew. Um, I think on, when I told my agent as well, um, you know, I was going through some mental health stuff and I was seeing psychologists and I think everyone was just asking why and what was the reason. So it, that was for me to tell them what the reason was. Um, and then it was like, look, being gay and playing football hasn't really been something that, you know, was connected. And obviously growing up, I never really thought about that. Um, so then it was like, you know, if, if you are wanting to come out publicly, then it's such an amazing thing for you to do and you should push it. But did somebody say to you, like, don't go public because there's no need for it or for whatever reason? Yeah, to be fair, you know, it was that was always the question. It was 50-50 with my family as well. It was, you know, are you ready? You know, you don't want any jeopardy to come out of it. You don't want it to affect your career. So there's loads of different reasons why you should or shouldn't do it. But I think since coming out, you know, it's, it's been the best thing and everyone has been accepting from it, so it's shown. Who's the first person you told in a football context? I can't really answer that. I know the first person uh, was my brother. You know, I was, I was telling him, I said, look, I think something's different here. 
Um, but I don't know how to deal with it. Uh, that was when I talked to him and it took a while until I told my best mate. But in the football world, I never felt comfortable talking to a teammate. That was, that was a bit of a problem because that was always a step. Like once I tell a teammate, you know, it's out there. It's not in my hands anymore. Um, so I think I told football people when I came out publicly, that's it. Mine was my mum and my sister to start with. Um, and then the day after that was the welfare guy um, at football because he knew something was wrong. So telling him, he obviously knew what it was. So um, there was obviously the place there for me to get some help towards that. A few weeks after that was my agent. Um, and then it was getting Sky Sports in. So obviously they knew and we were filming that. Um, and then the week I came out was my f football teammates and my friends and then the world. <laughs> What about getting back onto the pitch? Did did you just play the same? Did you feel the same? Or did you feel like, okay, the whole world is watching me now? Yeah, it was a little bit weird and obviously a little bit of pressure, you know, for them it's like, right, now we need to see if he actually can play football. And he hasn't just done this for like a publicity stunt. Um, obviously well, that was never the case. So there was a little bit of pressure there. But for me it was, it, what if, I think it was always like watching my back, you know, is someone going to say something on the pitch or going to personally attack me? But I've, I've never experienced that yet, so... And it's become easier? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah, because that's something I was, I was worried about. It's like uh, the moment you, you say and you s tell the guys in the dressing room, it will never be the same. Mm. And whether like the performance wouldn't be as good because you're constantly worried, like what do people think and how do they see you? But in the end, it's like, okay, it's, it's, it's been said, but then people move on. And that's a good thing. You know, It's yeah. not that you're the center of the world all the time. In that moment, it feels like everybody's watching you, but then eventually just kind of, you move on. You know, before I came out, though, I had heard things here and there about being gay, you know, banner in the dressing room, you know, it's, it's what everyone says, but that that completely stopped. And I think that for me was a nice feeling, you know, they they are accepting and they, they realise that, you know, I am there and I might take offence to it. Why did you choose to come out publicly? And why did you choose to come out publicly when you did? Well, I chose to come out publicly because um, I had people who supported me. Um, I listened to other people's stories uh, when they were saying how difficult life was and then when they came out life changed and you know, I got better. And it was the, the sum of the experiences from other people I thought I'm next in line. It's, it's my responsibility to help others like others have helped me uh, by being visible, being you know a, a football player or ex-football player who's played for the German national team. I want to be that person that other people can refer to and say, well, if he was brave enough to come out, I can do it. Um, so that was more responsibility because nowadays I don't feel the urge to tell people about my private life so much. Um, it's more being that person who helps others because I've been helped. That moment I, I said it would have been great if I had done it during my career. Uh, I would have liked to see how the, the, the lads would react you know how the club would react and, and the media but that wasn't the case but six months after I retired I just felt like it's got to happen now I almost said like if I don't do it nobody else will do it mm. uh, but of course that's that's not true but I felt the urge to do it and also for me personally it's like I don't want to carry that with me all the time and having to think who knows it who doesn't am I open can I open up to this group of people it was just you know, painful at times, like it's got to be said, it's out once and then never have to say it again. For me, at the time when I did come out, it was a massive mental health thing. Um, you know, it was dragging down my football and that, that was my life. And, you know, I was just living kind of in a, in a dark bubble at the, at the time that I was in and it wasn't nice. So that to start off was, you know, I, I kind of want to get out of that. Um, I'm struggling to know who I am. And that was why I told mum and my sister, um, then when it came out publicly for me, it was obviously I want everyone to know the real me um, and I want to be an inspiration, which is kind of another reason why I did it now. You know, there, there is there is no one else in, you know, British football that has that has come out. You know, for me, I do think there are other footballers that are, are gay in, in dressing rooms that aren't coming out. So for me, it was to be a massive inspiration and just keep the, the, the group there that, you know, people can come out and feel safe and know that there are players out there like myself and obviously you um, that have done it and it is a safe environment for them to do that. 
it's a great story. You, 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 you're true to yourself, you're an inspiration to others, and that to me was the most powerful thing ever, that suddenly people like get in touch with me and say, like, you've helped me, you've changed my life, and that is just, I hope you don't mind me saying this, sort of more powerful than scoring a goal or winning <laughs> yeah. a football match. It's just bigger than that, and that is just brilliant. Yeah, I had the same messages as well, and yeah, it's, it's such an amazing feeling to know that, you know, what, what you've done has encouraged others to do the same thing, and that for me, it was, you know, I don't want people to, be in the same situation that I was, where it's where you're a bit confused. It's to be able to come out and you know seeing their messages was was a very inspirational moment. Mm. Before you came out, what was the lowest point for you and and knowing you were gay? That's a difficult question because of course it's not just a moment. It's it's a period you're going through. You're thinking, okay, I'm I'm gay. You know, what I'm going to do now? Who 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 can I trust? Who can I speak to? And then you still have to perform, and you realise, or I realised, I didn't perform. I, I had injuries. Um, I couldn't get in the team at times. And you move in clubs, and every six or twelve months you move to a new club. It's a new environment, and it takes time to to build up a trust with other players. And I just couldn't make good enough friends to say, look, this is who I am and gradually come out. That never happened. Uh, and there were moments in the dressing room, and I don't know whether you've experienced this, when, when players talked about it hypothetically, is there a gay football player? What would you do if, if we had a gay teammate? Mm. And some of the things been said have, were low moments for me because suddenly players say, you know, if we have a gay teammate, I wouldn't shower with him. You know, I wouldn't get changed in the dressing room. I was like, really, is that what you would do? And there were some other things that, that have been said that I thought, you know, I wouldn't want to be openly gay in this dressing room. And that was, was very frustrating to say, that just proves that the, the dressing room can be a tough environment. I think that the, obviously the lowest point was when I was suffering mentally and that, that stemmed from me getting injured. I wasn't playing, um, I stopped eating, I wasn't speaking to my, my parents. Everything just kind of went in such a different position and you know, I could see myself, I wasn't the person that I used to be like, me and my mum had the closest bond and me and my sister had such an amazing bond and then that kind of just went to nothing. Um, and it, it was a horrible feeling. Um, obviously I, I got back fit, but I wasn't eating properly, got injured again, literally the first game back and I was back in the same position. Uh, and I just wanted it to go away and that was where everything came on top of me with me being gay and then it was like, I, I need to come out and just be, be fine with myself and that, that's how I was, you know, it, I've, I've accepted myself and I, I have for done for a good, I'd only say about three years, only like a year before I came I accepted it with myself, but yeah, so happy that I did it. What was the reaction from the football community when, when you both came out at the times you did? Uh, with me, it was a surprise, um, there are so many communities of different football teams that have an LGBTQ community within them. Um, so, you know, we've got Everton Toffees, for example, and um, Newcastle have their one, which I know, and just seeing them and them sending me videos, you know, Newcastle sent me videos and I'm chanting in the bar my name and just such a surreal moment because I, I never knew, I never researched it, that there were so many communities out there um, for each individual team and they're all so supportive of it. So it was such an amazing feeling to see that. I mean, personally, there was no need from former teammates to get in touch with me. Some did. They said, you know, well done. Yeah. Uh, brave step, you know, coming out publicly. But very few in the end, to be perfectly honest. The media was great, you know. Uh, but of course, you get some emails and letters from people who don't like yeah. it. And I'm sure you've received some yeah. of them. But it, it didn't really hurt me because I thought I've got nothing to be ashamed of. You know, it's, yeah. this is who I am. And if people don't like it, then they've got to get on with their miserable life. 100%. I was really, really pleased that there were so few bad reactions, negative reactions. Up until to this day, uh, very few people say something negative. Um, I mean, they might avoid me if, if they don't like me and for what I stand for. Uh, but we've all experienced it at social media. It can be quite tough. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, the biggest concern is always like being criticised for what I'm doing, not for who I am. Uh, because it's easy for me to say, look, you know, I'm not at fault at anything. I haven't done anything wrong. This is who I am get on with it but if somebody criticized me for not being a good football player or not working well for my club then I have a problem mm. and that's what's happened ever since you know people just dis disliked what I was doing but very few said like you know you being gay is disgraceful whatever it doesn't hurt me because I know for myself I haven't done anything wrong yeah. this is who I am that's it get on with it
Do you think there are any other gay men in professional football right now? There, there will be, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's always, you know, we talk about statistics and, and statistically there, there must be other gay football players. Um, but I, I can't talk about it. Honestly, my ambition was to be there for, for those people who, who are questioning themselves whether they should come out or not. Uh, that's the only ambition. But other than that, I don't know. There, there probably will be, of course, statistically, but I don't know if any, really. Yeah, I don't know of any. Um, I do think that there is. I don't know any. Um, but I just think it is, look, if, if there is, you know, you come out when you're ready, you can't force anything. Um, it's their choice. But I do definitely think that there is others in, in football that are gay. What do you think stopping more men in the professional game to come out? I'd say social media is one massive thing. Um, being a footballer, you know, you'll get targeted by other fans. And I feel like being gay or racism is such an easy target for someone to target you for. Um, like someone can say you're a rubbish player, but if, if you have come out as gay, that, that is, would be the first instinct to target you on, which will be like shouting you're gay on the pitch and that'd be their first thing. So, and I think for footballers having such a massive fan base, I feel like that is the, the main scare of it is social media. Um, I always have said that like, masculinity is a thing and you know, in sport you have to be strong. Um, and people, I feel like people refer to being gay as being weak, which is obviously not it, but I, I, would put, I think social media is just the biggest thing I would say. Yeah, I agree. However, it's interesting what you said about the dressing room, because when I, when I look back, I think that was part of the reason what stopped me or what made me wait longer because I would have felt extremely uncomfortable in the dressing room. Mm. I told you about you know, what people said, hypothetically what they would do. Not the fans, not the media, I mean, leave out social media, but media, I kind of sense they would be very positive. Fans, we discussed it, you know, they're, they're much further advanced than a lot of people think they are. But it's the dressing room, you know, you go there every day. And, and if there is a player or two that are uncomfortable, you know, getting changed in the same dressing room, then it's an issue. It affects, you know, training, it affects the games, the results. Yeah. So I did not want to be responsible for that. That was part of the reason. Do you think there's anything that could be done um, that would inspire more men to come out in the professional game? Nowadays, um, I'd say that a lot of clubs do good work. You know, they know they can't be against gay people in football. You know, we see the rainbow flags, um, and and the symbolism has definitely become bigger and bigger. But in the end, it's a personal story. It's a face to it, yeah. uh, and that's why it's so powerful to to say I'm one of them. You know, I I lead the way. Uh, that's what you can do, and 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 create an environment where it, it it becomes easier to come out. You know, when the clubs constantly say that you know they're pro diversity, and of course they would support uh, gay football players if they want to come out at their own club, and 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 allies. You know, other football players who say, well, obviously I'm not gay, but you know I would support gay mm. gay uh, football players if if he was my teammate. Great, I'd support him. Those sort of personal stories, but in the end, the most powerful thing is people like you who say, I'm, I'm gay and I'm a football player and I'll do the best every day, yeah. Yeah, I think the exact same thing, you know, it's, you can't force someone to come out and I do think clubs are doing such an amazing thing at the moment to make it inclusive. Um, but I do feel like when more and more people come out, we will get a roll on effect and it'll be, become more easier for people and then that's what will change, change it full on. Generally, do you think there is a homophobia problem in football? I wouldn't say home, like a homophobia problem. Um, obviously, you, you can't stop people from being homophobic. That you, you, you physically can't stop someone from shouting you're gay on the pitch or something like that. So I feel like it, it, it is a difficult position to be in, in in that respect. I don't think football is worse than the rest of the society. The issue with football is it's just so public you know mm -hmm. we see so much football every day on on tv um so the impression is more happens in football it's more homophobic than other areas but the rest of society you know it, it doesn't take place on tv every day or on social media every day yeah. that's why i believe and from my own experience that football can be tough uh, of course it's not perfect people who 
or there are people who behave uh, inappropriately, they insult others. Um, but from from everything I've seen and experienced in the last 20, 30 years, it's it's not worse. It's going the right direction. And yes, what you said is a really good example. I give people the opportunity to report uh, bad behavior. But in general, um, football is not worse than other areas. Of course, it's not better than other areas, yeah. but um, uh, it's just in the public eye all the time. Yeah. And that's why we're here and see more of it. Do you think football authorities could be doing more to help the LGBTQ community in professional football? Well, you can always do more, but since we both say that we haven't experienced it to, to a larger degree, that, that's a good sign. Um, we are in the public eye and, and whenever something happens, it can get reported and people see it and there will be sanctions. So clubs and, and federations, they've moved forward. As I said, when I look at the bigger picture in, in global football, development is not always to my liking, but you know, I, I guess FIFA and UEFA, uh, it's, it's on their agenda, but they can't really bring everything together. On the one hand, they're trying to promote, you know, a discrimination-free football. Um, and at the same time, they it, it, these events take place in countries where homosexuality is, is forbidden. Uh, that is a, a problem. That's why there's so much discussion going on still and, and will be in the future. That's very complicated. But... There is a lot of people, and here again, I think social media can be very positive, uh, where they say, look, this is unacceptable, we need to do something about it, and keep up the pressure uh, pressure on, on clubs and, and federations to say, okay, we've got to change this. Football is for everybody, it's inclusive, and, and don't say it's inclusive when it really helps you, and, and leave it out on, on other occasions. Yeah, I do think things are changing, and you know, they're, they're football in, in general is, is it's getting better. Um, Obviously, things like the World Cup, you know, they happen and don't get me wrong, I was a bit frustrated with, with the World Cup being held in Qatar, but, you know, it, it does happen. So I feel like it is in, in a good place and it's, it's definitely going forward. What is the biggest positive impact or change uh, you felt since coming out? For me, like we've said, it's seeing you've helped other people be able to come out. Um, that is such a massive, it's a massive feeling when, when you do see that. Um, especially for, for myself as well, you know, I, I found myself and that was one of the main things for me was to find my true self and I have and I've been able to do that comfortably and be surrounded by so many amazing people around me that I find I've, I've got a partner, I've got new friends that are also accepting and that, that's just the main thing I could have asked for. Mm. It, it's similar with me, it's just um, the confidence, you know, you gain so much more confidence yeah. and uh, being at ease with myself, I don't have to worry about who, who am I talking to about mm. what, it's just I'm, I'm myself, it's exactly the same and then adding to that what you said, uh, yeah, being a role model, it's not something I want to be in the first place but then you realise the impact you have and, and that is fantastic, but in general, just being happy with myself, being confident at ease with who I am, yeah. yeah. What advice would you give, if any, to anybody that's been in a similar position to yourselves, um, including in, in the professional game? Well, well I would say uh, don't risk your health. You know, if, if you get to that point where, where you risk in your health um, because you think you can't come out, then you should reconsider that. It's just not worth it. Uh, football players are often being told like you have a career of 10 or 15 years that's where you've got to make your money and live off it and I think that's really really bad to say that mm. um, your life's more than those 15 years of course yeah. they're exceptional if it's 15 years it's wonderful you've got to enjoy every moment of it but life means more than those 15 years so you've got to see the bigger picture and, and just don't do anything stupid or you know listen to yourself your body obviously tells you if, if you're in a bad state then that's what you've done uh, that, that's what I would say uh, and look at the the positive attributes try to find people who encourage you people who really help you and say coming out can be daunting can be tough but look, this is what you're going to gain. Some positives, use the example of other people and hopefully that will help. Yeah, the, the, main, the main one for me was just being able to speak out about it. The first time I ever told someone, obviously it was my, my mum and my sister, but the relief off my shoulders, even though it is a saying, I literally did feel that and I was dancing around the room and it was such an amazing feeling. So it is, you know, it might be difficult to be able to speak to someone about such a personal thing because you know it's a secret, it's your life secret is what it is. Um, but if you can speak out, do it, because it is such an amazing thing and you will feel more relaxed, more accepted and you're comfortable within yourself. And what are your hopes for the future of the LGBTQ plus community in the professional game? Yeah, I think for me, it's, it's to see more players come out as gay, you know, obviously there might not be any as gay, but personally I do think there is. And 
it, it is to see more footballers, more sports people come out and have that that circle of people and make it bigger and bigger and bigger as such a community that you know people can come out, be accepting. And after for me, that is the main thing. It's just to see that that positive change, which I do think is on the horizon. I, I sincerely hope that we kind of move on and, and that we don't always have to answer the same questions. Mm. And that's what, what happened to me. You know, for 10 years, I've been answering the same questions. And it's like, let's just move on. And, and it being a, a natural part of life, you know, somebody like you is, is there and you don't have to give answers all the time and say, what, about, what was it like? And, and all those sort of things. Uh, and in the end, it is what you said. Yeah, more people to live openly gay in, in the professional football world. And then, um, you know, and as I said, they talk about their partners. They don't come out and say, I'm gay, and mm. then next moment they have a partner. They just come out like every other footballer, straight footballer, say, just got engaged or yeah. divorced or whatever, and it being a natural part of it and not having to go through that. It's a big coming out video yeah. interview, and then everybody wants to know what, what, what happens next. It being natural, yeah. So I was taken into a darkened room, no windows, um, sat in a chair, a wooden chair. Uh, this arm was strapped with leather straps to the chair. I had electrodes which they had soaked in salt water uh, placed on my arm, stuck on my arm. 